Hi, fellow classmates, instructors, and friends. This is Ginny, your humble TCM student who knows absolutely nothing about this field, but wanted to start this audio journal to record everything TCM. If you would like to join my study group as well, please come learn with me. And let's get healthier by healing our bodies from the inside out holistically together. Hello, Kuko fam. Thank you so much for tuning in with me again on this second episode of TCM Health. Today, I'm going to talk briefly about how I came up with the name Kuko and one of the biggest philosophy for TCM. Let's start with Kuko, the name Kuko. You might wonder what that is, and there's actually a beautiful origin behind this. How I came up with this name was really random. One day when I was bouncing ideas off of my fiance about doing something for the community, trying to educate people on TCM and whatnot, he asked me what one of my first thoughts was for TCM. I basically told him that when I was small and when I used to get sick when I was still in Hong Kong, my mom would always bring me to the herbal shops. Whenever I visited and when I walked in, I would remember this really potent herbal smell that I really didn't like. All along the walls were filled with wooden cubbies that you could pull out and each one would have different type of herbs. And I distinctly remember them diagnosing me on my symptoms, then measuring out all of the herbs and putting it on this paper and then they'll wrap it up, give it to my mom. When I go home, my mom would start making the medicine and that weird herbal aroma would fill up the entire house and it would stink. I remember it smelling terribly. After my mom finished making it, she would bring it out and I will always run and hide. My mom will have to find me and drag me out, sit me down. I will have to finish the entire bowl of black liquid in front of her face before I could go play again. I hated drinking it because I'm sure as many of you who have had Chinese medicine had the terrible experience of how gross it tasted. My mom wouldn't allow me to drink water because then I'll be diluting it. She will always just tell me in Chinese, Fu hao le nye. Basically, what that means is it's bitter to the taste, but it's good for your body. And at that time, I was probably five. And at that age, I would just think to myself, oh my goodness, who cares? <laughs> who freaking cares about health? I just stepped into the world like I feel like I'm invincible. That phrase would just brush by me. I would never think twice about it. Until when I had to take Chinese medicine again during my puberty phase, my mom would say the same phrase. Because of that, and because she kept on repeating that phrase, it just stuck with me when I think of TCM. So when I was bouncing ideas off of my fiance about this whole audio journal and starting this whole platform, he heard that phrase and he was like, oh, cool. I never knew that's what it meant. A few days later, he randomly said, how about calling this audio journal Kuko? I didn't clue in at first and asked, what's that? He explained, well, it's from your mom's phrase, Fu Hao Le Nye. Fu hao, that's in Cantonese, and then ku ko, that's in Mandarin. That translates to bitter taste or bitter mouth if you translate it directly. That's how we came up with the name Kuko, which I thought it was really suiting <laughs> for this entire thing because Chinese medicine, first thing anyone thinks of is how bitter it is. 
to name it that. I thought it was one very fitting and it relates back to TCM 100%. And also it ties back to my mom from what she had told me when I was young. I thought it was very beautiful. It kind of all came together. So that was the origin of Kuko, in case you were wondering. Today, I am going to break it down for you. One of the biggest philosophy in TCM, and that is the yin-yang theory. To simply put, just like the wise girls from Spice Girls have said, too much of something is bad enough, and too much of nothing is just as tough. It is so damn true. And I know, I know. I know what you're thinking. Really? Yin Yang and Chinese? Really? I know. It is quite typical, but I am so proud that we actually coined it this theory because it can be applied to everything in life. Now, let's dive in a little bit deeper into what Yin Yang theory is all about. Well, if there is light, there is always going to be darkness and vice versa. So everything in life has a balance. Now there's a balance from your work to your diet, to your mind, to working out, and even in your relationships. These are only just some of the things that I'm listing out, but you could apply this theory to almost anything. Let's take work-life balance for a second. When COVID hit and we no longer have to go into the office anymore. Okay, completely truthful. I was the first one jumping up and down in my head. I was like, oh my God, yes, I get to work from home every single day. And my goodness, I am still living my best life right now, I have to say. But I definitely did go through some ups and downs while working from home. While it was all good and stuff, I do know a lot of people have a hard time trying to set boundaries for themselves, like setting a time that they have to turn off their computer and leave work because they're at home and perhaps a lot of their coworkers are putting in the extra hour. They feel like they're obligated to do so as well. With that said, we are having Zoom calls every hour on the hour and work life has been extended from 9 to 6 to 7, eating up into our leisure time, which throws us off balance. Now you don't have enough time to yourself to recuperate, to unwind. You're most likely still going to be stressed out from work a few hours after still thinking about the meetings that you had or the deadlines that you need to meet or the presentation that you need to do. All of this is still swimming in your mind and you don't have enough time to unwind and you're going to bed feeling stressed out. The next morning is happening all over again. For a lot of white collar workers right now, they're feeling languished. What that means is that you're moving by day by day. You're not feeling motivated, but you're also not depressed. So how does that work? You are just in a constant state of feeling nothing. Nothing cheers you up. Nothing really affects you. And let me just say that is messing us all up in here. That is no good for anyone. It is not healthy. For those of us who actually is also in Canada as well, we have long winters, plus a combination of minimum amount of sunlight every day because the sky gets dark at 4.30 during wintertime. Damn. Plus our lockdowns. Damn. That was a combination of exhaustion that we probably didn't even realize. But that's my thing. Having too much of something, which was work, and not having enough rest to balance that equates into a languished person, which is uh, obviously not great. 
you don't even want to do anything anymore. And even with our vacations, when we had the time to take them, you can't go anywhere because we're in a lockdown and it's COVID. So you're still stuck at home and doing nothing instead of working, but you're still in the confinement of your four walls. I have to say it was tough. I definitely have felt the effect of working from home and the down toll it had on me. Now, at the end of the day, would I still want to go back to work? Probably not. <laughs> so I just have to say, I'm very lucky because I'm an introvert. And being an introvert, I'm okay being left alone. I know for extroverts out there, a lot of them are super eager to go back to work. They're like, oh my God, at least, you know, let me go back to work for a few days so I could connect back with my colleagues, my management team and stuff. Hey man, everyone to each their own. But I'm just saying you have to find your balance. And for the extroverts, they know they need that face-to-face -face time in order for them to feel balanced. For myself, I personally really need my vacation days and I really need to get out of my condo to go somewhere in order for me to feel refreshed and energized. I'm sure you guys have also felt it as well. Say there is no COVID and life is actually back to regular schedule. You're at work and you're hustling and you have a vacation coming up. You're probably trying to do everything in advance. So for the two weeks that you're probably going to be away, there won't be anything that's going to be left open and your team is going to be good. You've met all of the deadlines. You have even submitted things after your vacation because you're diligent like that. When you're actually go on your vacation, I'm sure the first day you're still thinking about work, then afterwards you start relaxing and you're like, oh, wow, this, this feels great. And you're starting to enjoy yourself as the week goes by. But I'm pretty sure after a week and a half, you're like, wow, okay, this is nice, but I'm good. I could go back to work now. And that's what I mean when you need to find that balance, right? That's what I mean when I say having too much of something is never good. You always have to bring it back. If you're on vacation for an infinite amount of time, I'm pretty sure you're, you'll be antsy and you'll be like, oh my God, I need to do something. I need to go back to work. I need to do something with my life. <laughs> and if you're at work for infinite amount of time without vacation, just like how we had during COVID, we went crazy as well. We're like, God damn it. I am so tired. I'm so mentally drained that I can't do anything. You have to find your balance. But yes, this is the intro to the yin yang theory. I'm going to dive in a little bit more on the next episode because I don't want to lay it too heavy on you on the first one. If you're interested, stay tuned and let's find our balance together in the next journal log. Thank you so much for listening today and taking the time to learn with me. I'm so grateful that you decided to click that play button and listen to me today. It's incredible. Do you guys also believe in the yin yang theory? If so, let me know. If you like this episode, please give it a like. If you would like to hear future episodes, please subscribe. Or if you have any questions about health, please send me an email at kuko.health at gmail.com, which is k-u-k-o dot health. If you just want to say hi or drop me a DM on Instagram, come follow me at kuko.health, which is again, K-U-K-O dot health. Thank you so, so much for listening to me today. And please stay warm and healthy out there. And I'll catch you on the next episode. Bye.